yo what's going on man this is your boy super mario you're in the yo with your boy man today we're going to be checking out the oven plug-in which is uh influence from the actual hardware the oven um or whatnot now this particular piece of hardware i do not know about don't have any knowledge on it but i do know uh from research um about the particular hardware it is very rare it is very boutique and it is very expensive but a very very unique um processor um when it comes to your audio as well and the oven is it's 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 in its own world you know what i'm saying um if i could describe it it's kind of like a mojo box uh kind of like a sound enhancement type of tool um and it adds number one dimension it adds space it adds uh, um, a, a unique tone subtleness or you could drive it real hard to get a very aggressive uh dirty sound not the dirty you think it is like lo-fi type of dirty but a very clean dirty sound which is very effective um to your particular sound source that you put it on or whatnot so it is a very very cool tool um if you you know what I'm saying use it properly and stuff like that and that's what we're going to talk about today um you know what I'm saying going over what the plugin does and doing some sound tests um as well now um i have to say that the oven is um when you first glance at the plug-in, it looks like an EQ, but it's not. Uh, it looks like an actual saturator, but it's not a actual saturator. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's in its own world. You know, um, there's no technicalities to this plug-in for its decibels, uh, drive amount, um, you know, dry wet mix knob, or, you know, uh, some type of, you know, audio term or whatnot. It uses basic uh, cooking terms. Um, pertaining to the name the oven uh, so you get stuff like bake broil um you know saying sizzle um you know saying hot cold <laughs> stuff like that it uses those terms it's basically uh a no-brainer um we're gonna take a look at the oven in ableton live um you know saying go over um the plug-in on actual sounds do a sound test and uh, talk about those parameters as well. So without further ado, man, let's go ahead and talk about the oven. Let's check out the oven and let's hear the oven. Let's slide over to Ableton Live. All right, man, here we are in Ableton Live, man. We have the um, uh, the oven pulled up um, and everything like that. We have Mayor Applebaum mastering Hindi Amps, the design team, and plug in Alliance branded all over here. Brain works actually, um, or whatnot. Now talking about the plugin um, and everything, uh, let's just go over the simple parameters that make this plugin work. We're not gonna worry too much about the bottom. Um, this is pretty standard with Brain Works and Plugin Alliance as far as their TMT technology, mono maker stereo width, parallel mix and output um, and stuff like that. So that becomes pretty much standard on most of their plugins um that brain works and plugin alliance uh add to their collection however um this section right up here um is where uh the sauce go down and stuff like that man um if you want to think about signal flow um basically um you establish the uh the gain of how much signal that's coming into the plugin right here on the calibration mode um this kind of like sets up you know what I'm saying how much how much drive we're gonna add in here? You know, saying how much signal we're gonna drive into this plugin uh, to get, you know, that 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 mojo out of it or whatnot. I don't want to say this is an input gain, but it's almost acting like that, and you will see for yourself. Okay, once that signal flow is established, then it goes here to this temperature um, uh, parameter right here. Now, this right here, if you know a saturator um, and stuff like that, this, to me, um, reminds me of a drive knob. You know what I'm saying? It actually sets the um, the character, the tone of the plug-in itself, okay? Um, the cooking, um, this one parameter right here is almost like, you know what I'm saying, how much, how much saturation you're going to add to that particular sound. Um, you can go minimum or you can drive this bad boy all the way and you can really get, you know, saying uh, the sound that you're kind of sculpting or whatnot. Um, now, this is uh, dependent on these two switches right here, which is called bake or broil or you have electric or gas right here. Um, these are going to give you two different type of uh, sounds, so to speak. Um, when you move these switches to the right, it's going to get a little bit more aggressive um i can't really explain it because i don't know 
<laughs> you just have to play with it. Um, if you want to go more in depth, you can definitely read the manual. Um, if you do have this plugin, just click on the question mark and open the manual. Um, but you you can't really speak on what it's doing because when you speak on it, it's kind of like it's doing it, but it's not doing it. It has its own character. It's really hard to explain, but um, that's what it does for me. Um, explaining it now, I ain't gonna even lie to you. The burners. This is where I could say this almost act like EQ to me. Okay, the burner section, which is these three knobs right here and these three switches. Okay, all of this represent the burner. Okay, all right, you got three burners, low burn, mid burn, and top burn. Okay, and if you really break it down and look at it, um, it's basically a three band um, tone uh, leveling uh, system here, right here. So um, I just look at that as a, a three band EQ um, and you will hear for yourself as well. Um, now this, uh, the burners right here, this Bunsen um, switch right here, this controls the top burn knob, okay? So when you switch the Bunsen switch on, um, it adds a little bit more top end um, to your sound. Almost like um, it's adding a little bit more sheen um, to your sound itself or whatnot. But, you know, what I'm saying again, it's one of those switches where you turn it on and you just see if it works with your sound source or not. Sizzle is basically what you think it is. It's going to add that sizzle to your sound or whatnot. Um, so you have to kind of be careful with this particular knob right here. And then with sizzle, you get two different types. A or B, very, very, very simple. It don't tell you why it's A and B. You can read in the manual, but that manual really doesn't represent what these parameters are describing here. Um, flow, I can tell you right now, flow acts as if it's the output gain. So whatever you drive into this unit at 10, keep it there. If you have to back off, by all means, you can go ahead and back off. But um, you know what I'm saying, with your musical knowledge and understanding um i wouldn't mess with that i'll try to keep it at 10 as much as possible okay all right so um let's go ahead and um uh, hit play on the drums and let's start twiddling things and talking about it all right so what we're going to do is uh, establish our calibration mode um for us how much gain how much signal we're going to drive into the plug-in you hear the increase I'm going to put it back on low and I'm going to take this um, beat out of solo and I'm going to play it with the instruments just to see how much I need with the calibration mode. All right, cool deal. So what I was looking at is how much I was driving on the calibration mode. And then I was looking at my input and my output, making sure that I wasn't, you know, saying uh, overdriving a little bit too much or whatnot. So medium sound like it was perfect. OK, all right, cool. So we're going to go ahead and solo those drums again. And um, we're going to start driving up the temp, start turning uh, the temp high and low. I forgot to tell you guys that as well. Uh, the temperature has a switch high and low. Uh, you just got to play with it and see how it affects your sound. Let's go. All right, so when I switch it to high, you get kind of like this crunchy sound, but it's really not, it's not useful for this drum mix. Let's go ahead and push it to about seven. Yeah, you can hear the fuzziness. See how subtle that is, but it's very effective. Let's go ahead and uh, take that out of solo. All right, I like what I did right there uh, in between two and three. Um, that was our sweet spot. All right, um, so... I'm going to keep that right there. So basically, it's kind of like it's setting up, you know, saying uh, almost like a drive. Um, it doesn't overdrive, but it sets up, you know, saying uh, basically how much, you know, saying how, how, how hot you want it to get. 
or how cool you wanted to get. Temperature, you know what I'm saying? Common sense, all right? Cool deal. Now, cooking, all right? We want to cook this beat, you know what I'm saying? How burnt we can get this beat. How burnt can we make it sound? How warm we can make it sound? Uh, do we want to brawl it where we make it hot on the top and it's boiling and bubbling underneath that? Um, do we want an electric stove or we want a gas stove? Gas stoves cook a little hotter than an electric stove. So that's what cook mean. Let's go ahead and turn some knobs and switch some switches and see what happens. Whoa. Okay, you hear that that bottom end just kind of crept out of nowhere uh, in between two and three. I put it on broil and I have it on electric. Now, let me switch the gas to see what happens. Yeah, it does. It's doing something nasty on that kick drum. Now, when I take it off a of broil, you, you don't have that much energy on the low end. So let's go ahead and push it. That's just a little bit too much for the track. Ooh, that's a sweet spot right there, about three. When I hit it to gas, you'll notice when I switch it to gas, the clap comes more, more present, or more mid focus, and a little bit more fuzzy on the warm side, hotter side. And the broil makes that clap in the mid range a little bit more rounder. All right, so when I when you when you heard the time, do 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 do. Um, the brawl kind of makes it rounder and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? But makes it hotter. And the gas, um, it just basically makes it hotter, but just basically a straight, straightforward, you know what I'm saying, in front mix um, or whatnot. So um, it, it's it's a combination you have to use in between to get that tone that you're looking for, okay? Again, there's nothing, there's no nonsense. You got some numbers just to kind of keep up where you're at right there, and that's just basically it. I mean, there ain't nothing else you can say about the plug-in. <laughs> So what we're going to do is keep that on bake and electric on cook and we're going to keep it moving. We got it at three. All right, cool deal. When we switch the low burner, um, and we switch from A to B. B has more of a uh, more more aggression, of course, um, and it sounds a little bit warmer. A sounds a little bit more boxy, uh, a little bit more tight uh, on the low burn push or the low end push uh, right here. All right, I like what it's doing right there. I keep it on A. Um, it just complement the low end, complement the beat uh, really, really well. I got it right there about uh, a little bit past two. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the mid burners. Of course, you're going to hear that clap. Interesting. So this is why I told you <laughs> you can't really trust the manual. B makes it kind of more, um, it, it kind of shrinks the sound. It, it it goes from wide to just like that. Um, uh, you definitely can hear the mid, the mids come out in the mix, come forward. Um, but it does something right here. Listen to it again. This is A. 
That's B. You see how round it sounds? And this is A. See what I'm saying? The A sounds a little bit more close into the middle um, versus B sounds a little bit more wider. Um, stuff like that. Very interesting. All right, we're going to keep it right there at one. Uh, we're going to continue to move on, and uh, we're going to check out the top end. Uh, the top end is uh, we already got these hi-hats hi hi running and uh, sounding really, really good. Uh, let's see what we can chump up and mess up. Now, it's really hard to hear what the top burn is doing, so let's go ahead and solo Yeah, so type B, again, is it, it makes the sound sound like it's a little bit wider, gives it a little bit more fullness, while A seems like it's a little closed in, um, but very punchy uh, and straightforward, all right? All right, let's play it in the mix. All right, now let's go ahead and turn the busting on and see what happens. All right, let's solo to that again. It almost like the busting is adding like this 1.5 to 1 ratio compression. Very, very light, maybe maybe hitting a negative <laughs> negative one game reduction on the sound um but it definitely um squeezes a little bit more out of the uh, off the top end high end of the particular sound when you turn the bus and switch on you'll notice that that doesn't have a lot of squeeze on the top end you will notice the squeeze right here when you switch it on and uh, the hi-hats become a little bit more uh, prominent in the mix. Yeah, I like that right there. Now, we all know what Sizzle do. I don't think we're going to get too much out of Sizzle on this particular drum track. But let's give it a shit. Uh, let's, let's just give it a try, um, at least. Yeah, we can't really hear a difference, even if I was to solo it. You could definitely hear the very, very top end, you know, saying that that top end pass 13,000 hertz um, or whatnot. You can hear it. It's it's evident, but it's hard to hear through the mix or whatnot. Uh, we'll have to probably play with Sizzle uh, on a different uh, sound source there. And uh, let's show you what flow does. See, we don't have no signal, right? That's flow. All right, cool deal. All right, so that's the plugin right there. Of course, we all know what this stuff at the bottom, so I'm not really going to play with it too much. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we just hit a random channel right there, and bada bing, bada boom. That is the plugin and what it does. Now, we have uh, some chops here. Let's go ahead and apply the oven on that just to, you know what I'm saying, see what it's doing to the strings.
right? Not too much we can do on the high end. Um, the low burn is actually uh, making up for the uh, the middle section of this particular sound. So let's bring it back in the mix. Uh, let's go down here to this guitar. All right, let's play that back in the mix. that sizzle type B is doing on this guitar. Oh yeah, you can definitely hear the difference um, once you turn it off. Let's go here to the end of the track. You'll notice that the plugin is off and this is kind of like a guitar solo. I'm gonna turn it on. Don't hear the guitar when it's off. Oh, yeah. This is definitely a mojo box right here. It's doing some interesting things to the sound. Now, my curious thing is, how does this sound on an 808? Now, we got an 808, thunderous 808 right here. Let's see if we can enhance the 808. It ain't much we can do to it, but let's see if we can fuck it up. Whoa, one pff, hot temp. 
<laughs> Let's get it hot. I know we clipping the plug in, but we clipping the plug in, see? But it sounds really, really good. All right, let's play that again. Woo! Boy, the gas. Woo! Embroil. Woo! Let's see how they sound in the mix. I think that's all you need. <laughs> Notice the subtleness. It just, you know what I'm saying? Once you get the game staging correctly or um, whatnot, you will notice that, you know, the uh, when you have the plug-in bypass, you, will, you, you, you hear the sound, but you don't feel it in the mix. Now, check this out. You hear the 808. Now, once it loops back around, we're going to turn it on. Five, six, seven, feel it. That's pretty dope right there, man. Now, overall, this is a really, really good, um, really, really good uh, processor uh, for uh, stems, individual sources, mix bus, subtracks, stems, master track, master and chain. It's a true winner, man. Yes, sir. I like it. All right. That was it, man. That was the oven plug in right there in its entirety. Um, you know, saying sound test on certain uh, different sound sources just to see how it reacts and sound um, and stuff like that on urban uh, mystic type of sounds. And I have to say, um, it does a really, really good job and handling high energy sounds or whatnot. Um, very, very subtle plug in. You you can drive it and it still sounds good um, when it's very aggressive or whatnot. So uh, it's definitely going to be a mainstay um, in my collection. Definitely going to be using it, especially on the mix. It does something special on the mix. But overall, the plugin is very straightforward. There's nothing, um, you know, saying um, that's hard about it. Um, you know, saying um, even a caveman could do it. <laughs> so, um, you know, saying definitely check out the oven plugin at your um, uh, at your leisure or whatnot. You could definitely pick it up at pluginalliance.com. Um, you know, saying powered by Brainworks um, and engineered and uh, created from Mayor Applebaum um, and stuff like that, man. The oven it's good to go man you know what i'm saying so grab the plug in start cooking up some um good tones on your sounds and uh have fun stay creative on your music compositions until next time man this has been your boy super mario man um if you like this video go ahead and click a like man and also subscribe to this channel as well and as always again stay creative stay dangerous catch you on the next video peace